and thanks to organizers for double opportunity first to speak here and asking me to speak on a clinical topic otherwise i always speak on basic biological topics so double thanks so i am updating on use of metformin in pregnancy uh, basically the question before the clinician should we use or not is it safe or not safe is it good for the mother or not and what clinical practice guidelines say the background of my presentation if you look into the basic pharmacology of uh, uh, this metformin you know it looks on surface to be a worse drug in the sense it is uh, you know uh, there is a uh, there is a transplacental uh, metformin is transferred from mother to the fetus there is a transplacental transfer and the levels achieved in the fetus are as much as in the mother's blood it interferes with vitamin d uh, vitamin b12 and folate absorption not only this inside the fetal cells it affects the basic function of mitochondrial respiration that is very vital function for the fetus it impairs one carbon metabolism it inhibits nutrient uptake and we are creating artificial malnutrition and on top of that it affects gene methylation whole life planning of metabolism of the fetus is affected i am not saying adversely affected it is affected by this drug the few data is also there there is small for gestational age in the risk of uh, cardiovascular risk in the fetus despite so much of negative um, background metformin was used almost 40 years 50 years ago 45 50 years ago in one center in the cape town and with the experience of 5 and 1/2 years in 171 patient they say glibenclamide and metron appears to be safe drugs during pregnancy when properly used at that era we did not did not know much about the metabolic or molecular pathways of metformin on respiratory chain and other things now in context of this clinical data you know biological data is not good pharmacological data is not good but clinical data say ki yes it can be used because for used so with that now the option is we always treat pregnancy with the insulin what are the metformin advantages yes, it's low cost easy to administer wide spread used in lower income countries accepted by patient reduce maternal uh, gestational weight gain and reduce the number of infant born for last for gestation these are the advantage but it's had disadvantage i already mentioned crosses the placenta at a level equal to that of maternal circulation a small surge of children exposed to metformin in utero have heavier in childhood that means it's not the newborn is heavy but in childhood they become heavy and potential long term effects on metformin on offspring are un offspring are still unknown and compared to uh, when compared to insulin this of course neither human insulin nor its analogs crosses placenta it is unnecessary to consider metformin in pregnancy when a safe alternative is that is very important point why metformin because we have insulin and we can use it well proved well safe no problem but you know there are disadvantage to the mother not to the fetus that there is is risk of uh, gestational weight gain to the mother and of course hypoglycemia in the mother what are the indications for metformin in the pregnancy you know there are potentially three indications for metformin in pregnancy first and uh, important is in obese non diabetic women it is obese non diabetic women in an effort to prevent gdm and other maternal fetal complication like your uh, large for gestational age uh, premature delivery um, uh, this uh, hypertension of pregnancy uh, pre eclampsia all these risks are there in the obesity this obesity risk in obesity also is a risk of fetal uh, abnormal planning and long term uh, complications of diabetes in the uh, offspring in the later age so this could be one of the potential indication for metformin i will discuss what are the data on that in women with polycystic ovarian disease we treat them with metformin and metformin is one of the treatment for the induction of ovulation and it is successful so patient is already on metformin and she conceives question whether to continue or discontinue metformin that is an important uh, consideration of clinical decision making and of course it can be used as glucose lowering therapy in gdm and t2 dm patients along or in combination with insulin and they, this can be as an adjunct it can be alone also so what is the impact of metformin on the mother so uh, the clinical trial evidences are available and some of the trials are related to use in the obese women non non diabetic 
There are three trial results which I am highlighting here. That is, one was GROW trial. Uh, the second one was actually Empower trial. And this was Metformin MO, uh, MOP trial, Metformin versus placebo in obese pregnant women without diabetic I am just highlighting uh, very briefly these two trials, first two, showed initial some benefit in terms of, not significant, in terms of gestational weight gain as well as uh, fetus weight and risk of season section. In this trial, there was not a major statistically significant difference, but there was some benefit in terms of uh, patient developed uh, GDM was little less in women treated with metformin. And there were no significant difference in the gestational weight gain when seen women receiving placebo. But when this medicine metformin was used in BMI more than 35, this trial, previous two trial BMI was less than 35, and dose was 3 gram. Here is the difference, definitely there was an advantage. So in obese women, these three trial results suggest in obese patient, very obese patient, BMI more than 35, when you use a dose of 3 gram of metformin, definitely there is an advantage of reduction in gestational weight gain. Weight, weight gain. There was also a reduction in the rate of uh, preeclampsia and toxemia in those receiving metformin. And, uh, and, and there were also no much uh, advantage from the point of view development of GDM. So GDM point of view is not a good option, but maternal weight gain, gestational weight gain, as well as preeclampsia and toxemia point of view, it appears to be a good option. Now, now looking at Cochrane database, that does not support. Even from the point of view of prevention of GDM in women with who are obese, the Cochrane database, there is no evidence any intervention, including metformin, has any advantage from point of view of prevention of GDM. So just briefly summarizing is in very obese patient, BMI more than 35, use of metformin in very high dose, that is 3 gram, has advantage mainly of uh, lesser gestational weight gain, to some extent prevention of toxemia of pregnancy, and possibly no or minimum benefit from point of view of your development of GDM. So prevention of diabetes in pregnancy, metformin is not as good as it has been reported in PD, prevention of diabetes in your PDM in a non-pregnant non person. Now, there is one more trial, PREMAT, that is for looking for development of toxemia pregnancy with metformin. Unfortunately, results are still not open. So once the result comes, we will be able to say uh, better whether it should be used for that purpose or not. Now, trials of metformin PCOD women in effort to prevent GDM. This uh, randomized control trial, multicenter study, metformin was a PCOD in first trimester of pregnancy. There was not much benefit. There was little less prevalence of preeclampsia, and also weight gain was little less. The one more study that is PregMet2 and the pregnant women with PCOD metformin treatment from late first trimester until delivery might reduce the risk of late miscarriage, preterm birth, but does not prevent gestational diabetes. So in PCOD women also there was some benefit in terms of preterm birth, but then miscarriage. But when the data of these two trials was combined, then there was a reduction in preterm delivery from 8 to 4 percent. This was statistically significant. The finding was the composite endpoint late miscarriage and uh, preterm delivery. So it has definitely a positive effect. Large head circumference was seen, but it is not statistically significant. Does not require uh, a cesarean section, extra cesarean section. And the reduction in primary endpoint was more profound in women with BMI more than 30. So in PCOD women who are more than 30, there is some benefit of giving metformin, uh, continuing metformin which was used or uh, which can be given uh, from the point of view of better maternal and fetal outcome, but no advantage from point of view prevention of GDM. Now come the trials of metformin as a glucose lowering treatment GDM and type 2 diabetes simulator in addition to insulin. Uh, metformin versus insulin uh, MIG study and women with gestational diabetes mellitus, metformin alone and supplemental with insulin not associated with increased perinatal complication as compared to insulin. The women preferred metformin to insulin treatment. However, there was a less severe neonatal hypoglycemia and less gestational weight gain in metformin treated group. The mean infant birth weight was lower in the metformin group. However, this did not reach statistical significance. So there is a marginal benefit. And these trial results are basically Results are depending on the sample size. We should not take them as the final words. And 
In a randomized prospective study, uh, this was a Spanish study, metformin treatment was associated with better postprandial glycemic control than in very interesting point. For some meals, low risk of hypoglycemic episode, less maternal weight gain, and lower rate of failure as isolated treatment, most obstetrician and perinatal outcomes, obstetrical and perinatal outcomes were similar between the groups. So there's some marginal benefit. Now PLOS1 has published an actually RCT meta-analysis and conclude that metformin is associated with lower rate of macrosomia and large for gestational age mothers with GDM. This uh, MPREG the trial is progress, results are still awaited, so we can't say much about GDM use of metformin at the moment, but this trial result might give you better uh, answer. Now this trial, that is MITI trial, and MITI trial randomized 502 mostly obese non-treated women with type 2 diabetes to either metformin or placebo, a dose of 2 gram, milligram, uh, 2 gram per day. Women in the metform group had a lower mean HbA1c, a lower total daily insulin dose, a less use of short-acting insulin, lower rate of birth by cesarean section, less uh, gestational weight gain. Infant also experience lower mean birth weight, lower rates of extreme LGA or macrosomia, but higher rate of SG birth. So it is apparently the same pattern of results are there. So the, in summary, the metformin use is associated with in terms of less maternal weight gain, reduced insulin doses, uh, and maybe particularly benefit with small insulin resistant uh, insulin resistant patient, lower rate of infant with macrosomia and large for gestational age, and the risk of short, uh, small for gestational age. Now, what is the effect on offsprings? I told in first slide, metformin has so many metabolic effects, mitochondrial effect, this your uh, methylation effect, and everything. But good part is that metformin goes into the fetus through placenta but does not enter the cells. So metformin transporters are not developed in the fetus. That is the beauty of metformin. That's why we are comfortable in using metformin. So this actually case control uh, congenital anomalies database of some 15, 20,000 persons. There was, they compared metformin exposed, non exposed group. There was a marginal difference in the increased risk of pulmonary valve atresia but significant association was not more than would be expected by chance. So as far as the embryopathy and congenital malformation is concerned, metformin, so far there is no good data to say it is unsafe. Because medicine goes into the fetal circulation but does not enter the fetal cell. So don't worry about embryopathy. In fact, uh, uh, this uh, systemic review and meta-analysis also said there is no significant increase in the met, uh, embryopathy or congenital malformation, genetic, non-genetic, both. Now, what are the effect on offspring when it is given in the later part of the life? You need, I already mentioned, fetus-related parameters, like their uh, birth size and all were reduced. Even fat amount was also reduced, and there are so many studies in literature. And what more important is that at seven years of age, when offspring were followed, metformin exposed, unexposed, there was no difference in offering measurement. There were minor differences. But at nine years or so, metformin offerings were larger by measure of weight, arm, and waist circumference, waist to hip ratio, BMI, tricep fold thickness, DEXA fat mass, and lean mass, MRA abdominal fat volume. So what happens? Metformin use in interagenome, there is a trend. I am not saying there is a clear cut data or very large data, but there is a definite trend. Some fetus parameters of smaller, good, healthy from vascular metabolic risk point of view. But when they grow to the age of nine years, now the data emerging, there is an adverse. So a small fetus, you know, intrauterine malnutrition, we all talk about and vascular metabolic risk or metabolic syndrome in later in life. The same type of pattern of trend is emerging here also. This is one of the reasons we have to rethink about use of metformin in uh, pregnancy. So. Uh, here is then again a uh, meta-analysis. Metformin treatment for gestational diabetes altered the postnatal growth trajectory compared to insulin treatment. Child exposed to metformin compared to insulin in the womb tend to be born at significantly lower birth weight but heavier in infancy and higher BMI by mid-childhood. It is known that children who are born small and then undergo catch-up growth after birth are at increased risk of developing cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes later in life. It is important to understand whether this increased risk applied to children whose mothers are treated with metformin during pregnancy. So here is the 
these results are shown here so what clinical practice guidelines say you know ada guidelines say ki randomized double blind control trials comparing metformin with other therapies for ovulation induction women with pcod syndrome have not demonstrated benefit in preventing spontaneous abortion or gdm so they say from that point of view it is a useless medicine however due to potential growth restriction and acidosis in setting of placenta insufficient metformin should not be used in women in hypertension and preeclampsia or at risk of intrauterine growth they say ki if there is a risk of iugr patient is hypertensive or double eclampsia don't use metformin because there is a risk to the mother because of acidosis rather than risk to the fetus and they say ki yes there are some women with gdm requiring medical therapy who due to cost language barriers comprehension cultural influences may not be able to use insulin safely or effectively in pregnancy oral agents may be alternative in these women so they say you may use when nothing else you are left with no option but to have to use something then you can metformin after discussion with patient and non risk and need to more long term safety data of springs ag american college of obs gynae they say on the same lines ada guidelines that if there is no other option but of course metformin is one of the options actually national guidelines for diagnosis and management of gdm in india government of india published in february 18 they say metformin can be used when uh, after fetus age is more than 20 weeks after 20 weeks they allow use of metformin in fact they say metformin should be the first line drug is it based on some good data or just some expert view because in my best opinion uh, by uh, search of literature there is no robust data from our country to have such recommendation but at least they allowed us for the i think cost reason similarly what uh, icmr guidelines say after metformin in gdm study many centers have started using metformin as first line in gdm however more data needed in india i think they are very balanced opinion we need more data in our country to recommend metformin as a treatment of choice recently in 2022 one uh, two authors in a systematic uh, this uh, actually in a review article have some suggestions these are suggestions these are not guidelines that in obesity pregnant obese women consider very obese women bmi more than 35 to minimize the weight gain a small evidence base does not appear to affect infant size at birth personalized decision with risk and benefit particularly long term fetal outcome and breast side effects should be discussed with the patient so it should be with discussion with the patient only in very obese patient you can use metformin but with consent of patient in pcos consider continuing especially in those with bmi more than 30 metformin reduce the dose of uh, actually maternal weight gain during pregnancy in type 2 diabetes in patient already on metformin consider continuing throughout pregnancy however stop if they there is evidence of fetus being short for gestational age then you have to stop consider initiating treatment obese women who are insulin naive just last slide has come actually this is the last slide and consider initiating treatment in obese women who are insulin naive and consider adding it those who are large dose of insulin to reduce it so to conclude metformin can be used with calculated risk in potential long term risk of metabolic health of offspring in women with severe obesity or those require high dose of insulin or uncontrolled diabetes despite high dose of insulin what is most important that we need our population history data in any definitive opinion so i can't give any definitive view because we don't have any population specific data thank you very much for your uh, kind attention